This is the 8-Bit Do Retro Mechanical Keyboard, the C64 Edition. It has Bluetooth 2.4 GHz. It has USB hot swappable. It has 87 keys. And it has these super buttons and a super stick. And it's available for Windows and Android. And right now it is selling on Amazon for about $110 which I think the price will probably drop here in the near future. What's neat about this keyboard is that it has most of the keys on the keyboard are programmable and it has the capability of setting up keys as macros. It's mechanical so it has that clickety clack factor. The battery is said to last for over 200 hours. There is a software that's available for it that allows you to program the macros and some of the various options on the keyboard. Also allows you to update the firmware directly from the software. So here I've just unboxed the keyboard and look how beautiful it is. It, it has the bread bin kind of look. Back of the unit you have the ports which are 3.5 millimeter which plugs in your super sticks as they call them the super buttons you can have up to four of those super buttons plugged in and those buttons are programmable and so there is a closer look at the dials at the top and the buttons the button on the right is the profile button that so you can have multiple profiles you can have this set up for one profile maybe for gaming and then another profile maybe for productivity. It came with these little stickers in the box which was interesting. Not sure that I would ever use those. But in this video here uh, as I'm unboxing I'm also going to show a demonstration of how you can program the keyboard and make it work with some retro gaming emulators. That was the super buttons, and this is the super stick. You have to plop on the joystick part, which is still in the box. And then it does plug into a computer with that USB-C compatible cable. And there is the stick portion, and you just got to plop that on. And then you can go on your way with the keyboard. It's interesting I guess rather than plugging in directly to your joystick and directly into your computer you just plug it right into your keyboard and freeze up some of your USB ports. It's also notable that these devices have uh, magnets plugged into them so they kind of stick to each other which is nice it's a nice feature to have I wanted to demonstrate how the keyboard sounds it's really nice it's got a nice clickety clack if you like that kind of keyboard it's a mechanical keyboard it's the 8-bit do one of the things that's really neat about this keyboard is the ability to remap keys or to map keys to these controller buttons or you can switch switch keys around and you have a lot of capabilities even in the software. I'll show it in a few minutes where you can even set up a macro and have it run. Have a key that is assigned when you press it it will do a number of keystrokes. The key thing to know with these uh, buttons, these giant buttons can be programmed to, to emulate any key on the keyboard. And but it, it's just emulating a button. So if you you could map this to be you know L and it will type a L every time, or you could do it where it's control C, 
one of the things that I was interested in demonstrating was to use this joystick for retro gaming. It's unfortunate that this thing doesn't have a button like built right in. It would be nice if it had a thumb button. But uh, anyhow, what you can do, I'm going to demonstrate that by going into Vice 64. And then under Settings, Input Devices, Joystick, right here we're pretty much on default settings, but if we go ahead and switch to Key Set A, you can configure Key Set A, and then you can configure these to be up, down, left, and right. And this is just normal. So if we map the keys, if I want north to be up, I'll press up, south to be down, west is left arrow, and then east is right arrow. Now this is just strictly mapping it right here for vice. I also want fire button to be spacebar, and I'm gonna hit okay. So now if we notice this spot right here, up, down, left, right, fire in the middle. So now the key is mapped within vice, but what we need to do is then map it with on the 8-bit do. And to do that, all you have to do is push this button here in the middle, the, the, the star, that's the key mapper. So if I push that and then it starts flashing the light, hopefully you can see the light flashing. Then if I hit up arrow and then press up on the joystick, I've mapped the joystick to be up. You see that every time I push up, it turns green. Now I'm going to do it again. Push down arrow and push down on the joystick at the same time. Now that is mapped. So it's just that easy to map the buttons. Now I'm going to do left and right. So I'm going to push the button. Left. I'm going to push the button and do right. So now I have up, down, left, and right. And then I'm going to do fire. So I'm going to make this button the fire button. So I'm going to do one more time. Spacebar and button A. Now if I wanted to load up a quick game, we could demonstrate that working. Let's go to attach a cartridge. And... Let's do, I would do Miss Pac-Man, but that doesn't have fire. So we'll do Centipede. And press F1 to start the game. Oh, okay, so now here it's not moving because I'm mapped to joystick one, but if we hit Alt and J in Vice, that turns it to joystick two. And then if I use both hands, I can be playing the game. So that's the beautiful part of being able to map the keyboard with the 8-bit do. Now, having set that up, I also set it up in Stella. So I'm going to close that. I was playing around with Scramble. Now, in, in Stella, before you start the game, if you go into Options, Input, and then you can map the keys. And I've done this already. So basically, you just have to map all your keys to whatever you need. You hit left joystick up, hit map, and then you push the key on your keyboard. And right now, they're all mapped up, down, left, and right. And so that allows you to play like normal just about so now I can play scramble and then I'd have to of course map button B which I don't have mapped to drop the bombs so now the next thing I wanted to show is I wanted to demonstrate the software and we'll do a quick macro now this is neat because you can have multiple profiles so what we can do is I can go in and create a new profile. And then once we're in the profile, in order to start programming it, we have to, the keyboard has to be set to off, flip to the macro tab, 
And then it says, click on the key you want to configure. What well, the neat thing on this keyboard, you got these A and B. So I'm going to click on A and then create a macro. So what we can do here, you have the option to go repeated. You could repeat the macro a number of times, multiple times, or just once. So I'm just going to leave it on single and do a start. And then we can start typing. And hit stop. And then once you've done that, you come back in and then you activate the macro. Now that it's activated, I ought to be able to go back to here and push the key. And look at it run. It's kind of slow, but it's kind of neat though. It's a little clunky, the creation of the macro process, but I just wanted to demonstrate that it is a possibility. So in conclusion, this is the 8-bit do mechanical keyboard for the C64 edition. It is a really nice looking, it's slick, it has a lot of functionality. To me, it all comes down to is what kind of keyboard do you like? Do you like having this kind of a smaller keyboard without the 10 key? Do you like having the capability of being able to have macros and to be able to reassign keys? Do you like the option of having these huge super buttons and the joystick built into the keyboard? The other thing I like about the keyboard is the way it cups your fingers. It, so it's not a flat key. Your fingers fit in the middle of each key. So it's really beautiful. Those are the types of things that you're looking at when you buy one of these. For me, it's not my cup of tea, I really bought it just because it had that Commodore 64 look and feel, and I thought it was pretty neat. But functional wise, I really need a 10 key <laughs> keyboard. So I probably won't be using this as my daily driver, but I really do like the keyboard, the option, and also I feel like right now the price for it should probably be a lot lower, around $75 is where I would think it should be. So it really, yeah, it does come down to what it is that you like. One of the main features of it is how slick it is and how compact it is because it doesn't have that 10 key. It's something for everyone. Anyhow, that is my opinion and my review of the 8-bit Do keyboard. I do really like it and I highly recommend it.